like my fox. Uh, we now have some time left for you guys to come down. I think there are mics somewhere set up. I have no idea how this is being handled. Uh, oh, look, there's a light over there. And a light over there. Start over here with the man in the yellow shirt. Hi, I'm Patrick from Brooklyn. Big fan of the show. Doing a great job, guys. Hi, Patrick. Hi. I'm curious. Now, with all the talk about Fox merging with Marvel, is there any chance that we might see some of the Marvel properties that have existed in the MCU crossing over with Gifted, maybe Agents of Shield? Where's my dad? That's that's for you, Jeff. They go like that. I, I, being completely honest, like that's it. Figure that out. Uh, and, and when they let us know, uh, but wouldn't that be fun? So, just because uh, I know I have to give you some credit, sir. H having the responsibility of creating and running the the only live action Marvel television series that features the X Men uh, is an extraordinary responsibility, and it is something that Matt <laughs> put on his shoulders and and did something. I like. You can't imagine the labyrinth of people that are uh, up his nose uh, every time he decides to write the. Well, well, should it be the or should it be? And, and he handles it amazingly well. Well, thank you. I was just going to say, we get that question a lot. And just so you know, our experience, it's a little bit like uh, asking a French peasant in the Middle Ages, um, how do you feel the, the result of the Hundred Years' War is going to affect your wheat crop in a few years? It's just, I, I, don't, I don't even know what they're doing. There's wars going on at, the, at a very high level. But uh, I'd just say in general, you know, everything is sort of out there to be determined at a future date. And we've just sort of been trying to work with Marvel and they've been super uh, cooperative and everything about just trying to stay, keep everything compatible if, it, if things can go that direction and keep everything Independent if things don't go that direction. Uh, actually, there, I'm going to jump in line for a second. I, I do a lot of these panels, as you guys know, but I never get the chance to sort of ask a question that I, I think you guys should know, which is we all use the name showrunner, and I and I think you guys sort of sit around that Matt's in his office with his feet on his desk, going, "Move camera two over to the left. That's good. I like that." Um, tell me what your day is like. Well, I mean, essentially, I am the executive producer, in, I'm the producer who's in charge of the show creatively. So I'm doing, I'm supervising the writing room, breaking the stories, rewriting episodes. You get up at 10, 11 a.m. Pardon me? You get up at like 10 or 11 a.m. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I sort of get Go up for a swim. Bon bon, yeah. No, it's a lot of, uh, um, it's a lot, it's a lot of writing, uh, watching cuts, casting, um, dealing with actors who have strong opinions about their characters calling me. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what he means. <laughs> the, uh, actually, no, I will, I will give props to all these people. One of the great things about this show is that actors really do, like, a, a, an actor with a stupid idea, there's nothing more dangerous, but uh, we don't actually get that on the show. <laughs> no, it's true. It's, I'm, but I'm saying you guys don't... We're not saying that there's any of there yeah. at here. Yeah, I'm just saying like when you have actors who are advocating for their characters and who... Um, I was just watching an episode the, episode 10 the other day and just watching the way that all of the characters, all of the people, I shouldn't say characters, all the actors on this stage had called and weighed in on their character. So, uh, you know, teasing something. When, uh, when the Struckers finally do see their son again, uh, Amy had very strong feelings on how that should play, how she would behave when that happened. And, uh, and it's no, and it, and, and it turned out great. And now the world knows, Amy. Yeah. And I'm the problem. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, actually, I'll join you. I had the same with my baby as well, so yeah. Yeah, all, all down the line here. I mean, watching, it, you know, uh, Emma and Sean both had ideas and thoughts and feelings about how... Wait, was that, was that ideas? Did you just go, ideas? I don't know. I'm trying to compliment you guys. I won't make this <laughs> This is going yet. really well. <laughs> so yeah, but actually, so yeah, my, my day though is really just um, 
casting, uh, rewriting, editing, um, dealing with production, figuring out, you know, how many times can we see a laser before we're way over budget, those kinds of things. So, um, gotcha. yeah, you, by, by the way, it's very expensive every time you do that with your hand. <laughs> stop, stop, stop me, stop. Yeah, we don't have a budget for my portals anymore, so please stop. <laughs> Yeah, we have to walk everywhere now. We walk everywhere right now. I only got to fly. You only got to fly. <laughs> she fucked that. I only got to fly. End. End of your sentence. To, here's, I'll take the shovel from you. <laughs> Eventually, I'll, I'll re and get this back again. Uh, uh, the gentleman over there. Hi, my name's Evan. Uh, Hi, Evan. This question's for Amy. Um, Did you really complain? Uh, feels like this role versus like Root or um, or Dr. Saunders, uh, which are of course all incredible, um, have all been very different. Has that been a conscious choice for you oh, in uh, choosing roles? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I like to try to play different things, and, and then it's, I, I mean, I think for me, I tend to gravitate towards genre and comic and sci-fi stuff because the roles get to evolve so much, so I feel like Caitlyn season two is, is a different role than I played last year, which is really fun, and um, I hope I'm sure she'll continue to change, and who knows, take on Riva, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I do like to try to play different things, and have been lucky enough to play different things in the same show, so that's fun. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thank you. Question over here. Hi, um, my question's for uh, Matt and Amy, uh, also related to what you were just saying. Uh, your character, love you in general, but will you be getting more badass as the series goes on? Yes. <laughs> hey, question over here. I mean, it's, it's a thing she does really well, and, and you know, you don't have any actor on your show and just go like, oh yeah, that's, it's just have her not be badass, obviously. She needs hey. to do. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff, Mia. Blink, do you have a question? I do. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. I found it for you. Yeah. <laughs> we need it on our show. Exactly. Thank you. We're, we're going to need it for episode 10. <laughs> Blink's portals, actually. No. I know. I'm a huge fan of her in the comic books as well. And in the comics, I'm sure we all know, she throws really cool daggers and they open the portals. Yes. Yeah, come, is that a spoiler? No, it's not going to happen this season. Daggers is not the show. Um, I don't know, anything's possible, right, Matt? Well, I mean, I will say... Um... Right, Matt? <laughs> oh, right, here's the thing, absolutely. Really, the thing... Um... I mean, to, to sort of look under the hood on a show like this a little bit, um, one of the things that we looked at from the very beginning was thinking about, like, how do we evolve the powers? Because if you read the comics, like, obviously, powers change over time, and uh, new things become possible and stuff like that. So we consciously decided with Blink, because, you know, in the comics, she's sort of inexpert with her powers when it starts. In Days of Future Past, obviously, she's in full javelin, or not quite javelin mode, but she, there's a different level of power there. And so, um, you know, teasing, we will see younger Blink this season, and we'll see... Her other little puppies, I saw that. Yeah, so we also ev evolved that. Um, and so, yeah, the, the, the hope is... Um, By season three... Should we be so fortunate as Deep Rock? have Kingston. <laughs> or Actually, you know, the funny thing is, ironically, we did discover... Now, I, I, I'm not promising this this season by any means, but javelins are actually way cheaper. Because, like, <laughs> because the thing about it is, when the portals open, like, we thought we were being clever by having her go, Ugh! right, well, okay, the problem is, now, like, the portal's in front of her, and the artists are spending all this time with it, and it's really different. So once we get into, like, you're throwing javelins all the place. It's cheaper. You can portal everywhere. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. <laughs> the portal is still the about the art. I'm going to go to the drinking fountain, I'll portal to the drinking fountain, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> and I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't mention that if you really like to see someone throw daggers, there's a whole other Marvel show that's... <laughs> oh, you know. Sorry, it's just every now and then it comes out. Um, how about over here? Hello, my name is Sophia. Um, my question is in general, was Magneto right? 
Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I see whether or not Emma has an opinion about it. I, I think I'd rather say that Magneto was, was not that Professor X wasn't, but Magneto was very, very brave. Um, I think it takes a lot of balls to uh, kind of go against the brain. <laughs> <laughs> and go with what's been popular, even though you really believe that it's right. Emma? Yes. My father did what no one else was brave enough to do. He stood up for mutant kind. Showed us a new path. In case the whole building starts coming down around us, I am not responsible in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> well, you can't do that. Uh, over there. Hi, uh, my name is Sarah. This question is for Jamie. And I really love seeing you on the show as an Asian American. Um, I feel represented. <laughs> uh, and so my question is, you as an actress, as somebody in this industry, what are your next steps? Um, and continuing this representation that we've been seeing, but that we could definitely, you know, see more of. Um, you know, aside from being a part of a huge, huge show, um, I think a lot of producing, now that we do have the doors open and all these new opportunities, you know, I think it's, it's choosing the stories that we want to tell, that are important to us, that are specific to us. And so, if there's a lot of creative stuff is going on behind the curtain and there are some things that are brewing and coming together and certainly it is all about producing content. So that's, that's next, Thanks. hopefully. Thank you. Oh, over on this side. Hey. Someone who looks fairly familiar to this group. Yes, done. <laughs> hey guys, so my question is for Emma and Sean. So, I mean, I get that I get that <laughs> Marcos essentially, essentially like took the side that he thought was better. I mean, he chose that over in love. Do you think that he's going to, I mean, uh, do you think that... Okay, let her finish her question. <laughs> do you think that once he sees his baby for the first time, he's going to take the other side? Or do you think that will result to him having to kill his love? Wait, a woman? Now you see her on you. You thought about that. Two very people. Um, no, I, well, I, yeah, we're making a show where people kill babies. That's what's going on. Because I love it so much. Why would he have to kill me? Um, to, like, to, like, have the baby, do you think he would? No, of course. Well, like, yes. They didn't have the cleanest of splits, and actually, I, I, I would say that, in his opinion, I think his child was taken away from him. He didn't have a choice. Uh, and <laughs> am I wearing anything metal? Am I wearing anything metal? Um, and so, uh, no, he would, he, yeah, but, but at the end of the, the season finale, I guess, firstly, there's a, there's a more, uh, Polaris ends up using a more abrasive action than he would agree with, and he doesn't actually expect the family to break up and this to stop. It's Polaris leaving on her own accord that does that. He thinks this is going to settle down, they're going to figure this out. That's why he stops Caitlin from chasing after Andy right away. They don't want anyone to get hurt, it's going to get out of hand, we're going to fix this. And then six months goes by and he's still chasing her. Uh, he did stand to his ethics then, he did stand to his moral standing point there. But ideology comes second when it comes to the fact that his baby's alive and his child and family have been taken away from him and the woman that he loves. So when you see later on, if you tune in on Tuesday, you're going to see him question those exact ethics we're talking about. Um, it's never to kill Polaris. Uh, obviously never to kill a baby. <laughs> um, but it's my job. <laughs> Make sure that doesn't happen. Um, but uh, but uh, but he uh, he does question he does question his ideology and the basis that his emotion overcomes anything else. I think the pain and loss and love that he feels uh, outweighs most of his other of other facets of his persona. Um, so it will dictate some of his behaviour, especially coming up. And sadly for Polaris, I think it is maybe the opposite that her like political views, her ideologies come first before true love. Um, and she knows that Marcos is her true love because the Aurora Borealis still exists and yep. it's still there. Um, and obviously her daughter comes first, but 
um, she needs to change the world. That's part of her family legacy that she does this, and she is coming to realize that. Marcus just wants to go to the park and eat ice cream with his kid. Just saying, I think that Polaris could totally take me a flight. Yeah. She said she could take me a flight. Oh, I'm But I can singe all her hair off, and that's oh. me winning. So that's funny. It's a wig anyway. <laughs> How about over here? Hi, I'm Hannah. Um, Hi, Hannah. What was your favorite scene to film? Uh, Jeff, Lowe, what was your favorite scene to film? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, Kobe, is there, do you have a favorite? Wow. Um, I like the one, uh, season one, I think it was episode 10, when the triplets finally all get together and make all my dudes turn on each other and blow each other up and <laughs> that was, I thought that was some that was some good TV man. That was some good TV. <laughs> uh, over here. Um, this is a question for Kobe and Matt. Um, now that Turner isn't part of the government and he doesn't have them like holding him back, do you ever think we could see him do like a vigilante justice name the hero killer type thing? Uh, just, you wait a few episodes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I could see that happening, that yes. Happen. <laughs> Very much so. Uh, over here. Hi everyone, my name's Nikki. Uh, I have two questions. Okay, Nikki. First one is for Max. Will the X-Men appear in this season? Well, I, I, it sort of depends on how you define the X-Men. Uh, Blink, technically. Uh, Jamie and I are X-Men. Yeah, the, um, it, I mean, I, the, 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 the mythology of the show is that the X-Men proper have disappeared post 715, so um, uh, officially no, per, per Jeff Loeb, anything is possible, we'll see. Wouldn't that be exciting? <laughs> and you have the same question? Yeah. Um, if you're, if the powers that you have in the show were real, what would you do and why? I would steal the quarters from the laundromat. <laughs> <laughs> but donate them to charity. That is selfish, that was really good. Oh, I was wondering where you were going with it. Grace? I'd make toast for everyone. <laughs> Definitely. Well, um, you know, Rima's power is emitting a hypersonic sound that scrambles your brain. My husband says I already have that power in real life. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> He's back there going, no, I didn't. No, you're not funny, Grace. The porn in your game. <laughs> oh, uh, me? Okay. Maybe, yeah. I would start like a travel agency. <laughs> Welcome to Blink. <laughs> Where would you like to go? Blink and you're there. There. <laughs> Blink is my favorite character, by the way. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Thank you very much. Uh, over here. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Jose. This is a question for Emma and Sean. Let's say hypothetically that your child doesn't turn out to be a mutant. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Child, the way they love each other. Honestly, the whole stream of our show is acceptance, so we will love our child no matter what 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 race they are part of, whether that be mutant race or the human race. It doesn't matter. Like honest, honest and earnestly. Like, surely, I think I, I don't think there's a man that's loved his baby more. I think there's, especially considering he hasn't met her yet. <laughs> um, pretty in love with that thing already. Uh, no, uh, it. Uh, it, it Powers or not, he just wants to make a world where they can live together. That's all it is. So uh, if they didn't have powers, probably be a little bit bummed for a couple of days, uh, and then and then we would go back to normal life. Actually, I'm gonna say I actually think Marcos and Lorna. I can't speak for your character, but I believe that they would be grateful if they had a human child. That's absolutely. They they wouldn't have to go through um, the you know harassment and the and the prejudice that they had to go through. So actually, I think it'd be a positive reaction. Yeah. And let's just say, the child will be extraordinarily attractive regardless. 
I have a hot baby, so. How about all these people with a British accent? Yeah. Jace adopts the baby, everybody wins. We all go home, right? We're good. Here we get done. Over there. Uh, hi, I'm Stacy, um, and I wrote down my question because I'm scatterbrained. Um, so, this is for anybody. Um, the X Men have always been an allegory for persecuted minorities, especially LGBT kids and adults. Um, and I especially saw that mirrored in Lauren's story in season one when she was kind of like in the closet from her family. Um, so, I was wondering if you were going to explore any of those specifically like queer mutant issues in this season or next season. I think that's always in the background, uh, and I think that one of the things that I, when, when I look at how we're writing stories, I think that there's so much crossover between those things. I mean, specifically, uh, this year, uh, those questions are more addressed with Reed's storyline, um, but I think that when we look at those issues, you know, there are just so many issues of oppression, different groups that are, you know, uh, taken in the chops this, this, at this time, uh, that in a nice way, actually, we can have those things overlap so that we don't have to say, well, this is the kind of oppression that is only experienced by, you know, racial minorities. This is the kind of oppression that is only experienced by the LGBTQ community. We can sort of cross those things over and show some of the commonalities and some of the differences between those kinds of uh, social uh, injustice. And and I think we all can sort of agree that that the best X Men stories are the stories which ultimately teach us that, about tolerance and that if we don't figure out how to love each other and and cross this divide that's getting wider all the time that it's just going to just be a ball of mud. And, and we can't be, because the human experience is such a beautiful thing that just looking at this extraordinary cast and how diverse it is and how everyone cares so deeply for each other and how Matt continues to create storylines that shows that, that really it's, it's not about what you are, it is about how you love each other. And, and hopefully we can get to that place. <laughs> Hello. Hi, uh, I run a uh, gifted after show called Get to Talkers, which you can find on Cinelinks on Wednesdays. Cool. Uh, okay, awesome. And my co-host co couldn't be here, but he's a big fan of Blink. And in season one, when she was trying to learn to train, uh, she her happy thought was a warm jelly donut. And I think he would be he would want me to ask you, is it still a warm jelly donut? And, and are you ever going to get that donut? <laughs> I ate a dozen of those donuts, and um, it, yeah, now it's just the dog. It's our dog Zingo. She thinks of Zingo and she makes it happen. No, in all, in all realness, she has developed her powers enough that she doesn't need to focus so hard on, on opening a portal. Like before it was fleeting, before it only came when she was you know, um, in danger or when she was escaping something, and now it, 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 she's able to control it a little bit more because she already ate the donuts. Yeah. <laughs> so we have very little time left, and so we're going to put this into a, a lightning round. So these- This is actually going to be our second to last question. This is, oh, okay, I'm just being told that. Uh, <laughs> clearly there's someone even more powerful than Laura here. Uh, so uh, if you can go yes or no, then we can probably get another question. His face is on the uh, 